Welcome to this NGWA Industry Connected video, which is brought to you by Franklin Electric, an industry partner of the National Groundwater Association. Hello, this is Marvin Glottfelty here with another Industry Connected video from the National Groundwater Association. Um, I've been hearing from folks and considering with other uh, associates in my work um, about how we now need to design water wells with consideration of what might happen in the future. <clears throat> we are, of course, in the, in the western and southwestern United States in a, a drought. It's been said to be a 1200 year drought, a very severe drought. And uh, we, we, we need to um, respond to that. So a lot of uh, entities are putting in more water wells. They're going to be pumping more groundwater. And there's going to be a reaction to that by the aquifer. And so we, we, uh, we need to be thinking through how this uh, can be changed and what can we do to well design to allow this not to be a problem in future. So I'm going to show you some things that, uh, that they both uh, foresee what may happen in the future and how we can address it. So I've got a PowerPoint to, to uh, show this, and I want to share my screen for a second here. So here we see a photograph of Lake Mead with the big bathtub ring that uh, most folks have heard about. And uh, there's, there's uh, you know, a lot of uh, reduction in the surface water flow that's otherwise available to states like Nevada, Arizona, California, and some other places. Well, um, this means that more farmers, power plants, industry, municipalities, all of us are going to be relying more on groundwater. And what's that mean? There's a number of things it can mean. Wells, shallow wells may go dry. So if we are designing today a well that goes down to X depth and the regional water table drops because many other wells are also pumping, that well may go dry. So um, one thing we might want to consider as we plan for the future reaction to wells is what if they go dry? How do we deepen them? Next one would be water quality declines. If we have a strata of the aquifer that is of poor quality, for example, in an area with agricultural history, we may have high nitrate in the shallow aquifer. We just seal that off with an annular seal in our well. But what if the water table drops in the future and that poor quality water drops with that water table down to where now it's adjacent to our screened interval, we can begin to have water quality problems here. So how do we address that? And that'll be something to talk about. And the third one is not so obvious, but, but certainly occurs a lot in the Western United States and other places in the world, and that's land subsidence. When we dewater a clay layer, um, the clay particles are actually supported by the water and so they can collapse and that's a permanent thing. So we get actual drop in the land surface. Uh, historically in Arizona, we've had uh, over 18 feet of land in, in some locations of, of land drop. In California, it's been over 30 feet. And I know they've had some in Texas as well and other places like Mexico City has had extensive land subsidence. So this is not a new uh, realization, but it's something that we need to deal with. And in terms of the wells, what that does is as the land shifts downward, the well can't handle that stress. And so it collapses the well casing. And how can we prevent that well casing collapse? So we may still have the problem of many infrastructure uh, disruptions, but we at least will have our wells survive such a land subsidence. How can we do that? Well, let's talk about these one at a time. First, the deepening option. We want to uh, be able to deepen our well in the future. So we install our well to a certain depth, shown in this example, a screened interval. And we might typically have a bullnose or a steel metal plate welded to the bottom and then fill the annulus with filter pack material and so on. But the problem is if we then deepen it, the filter pack will be lost. It'll YouTube back into the well and we'll lose our filter pack and we'll have sand invasion in future operation of the well. So what we can do is install this well casing open-ended instead of with a steel cap at the bottom. So we just pour a, a cement plug inside and outside the casing and let that set up. 
that's a hassle because that means we have to let we have to wait in an unstable open borehole till that cement sets up. So we'll usually add an accelerator to it to make it harden quicker, calcium chloride or something equivalent. And then we complete our well. Now in the future, if the water table drops and we don't have enough water, we can drill out from under that and install our well without having our filter pack in the upper screen interval being lost. So this is a, a good little trick to give us plan B in the future if we need it. So that's the first option right there is if we're going to if we're going to deepen a well, we want, we want to give ourselves an opportunity to do that without completely messing up the original well. The second option would be if our um, if our water quality is going to potentially shift, how can we how can we address that? We may put in a well like this, but if our our water table that's way up here and isolated by our screen, our annular seal shifts downward adjacent to our, our screen interval, we're going to have poor quality water coming into the well. So what we can do is add in a blank interval, maybe 20 feet long or longer. You know, uh, that we might call a pump gallery, a good, a good place to put a pump, but it's not uh, only for that purpose. If we have filter pack behind it, it won't really allow us to isolate above and below the well, but if we put a little seal behind it, like bentonite or cement, that means that if the water table drops and the upper part of the well becomes problematic, we can isolate that real easily without a lot of difficulty to modify the structure of the well so that only the lower screened interval produces water. So this is a good plan B in terms of water quality. But we can do things like that. How about the land subsidence issue? How do we keep wells from collapsing? Well, there are features um, that are uh, called uh, compression sections that are supposed to address that. But in my experience and to my understanding, they don't work very well. So what might be a better approach is an intermediate casing. We can drill down a certain distance and either pressure grout a, uh, a annular seal in place or just use a trimmy pipe to put that annular seal in place and have that intermediate casing partway down our, our length and then drill out from under that after the cement has set and install our well. This means that if and this and this intermediate casing would be set close to where this uh, fine grained clay layer might be. So if we have a clay layer here, which is what would cause the land subsidence, the thing that would collapse, then if the land surface collapse drops down, then this upper casing will drop with it and the lower screen interval is not connected to it. This is just this is this just extends up to the base of the intermediate casing. We can let go of this with the back off shoe. In other words, a left hand threaded uh, connection where we can we can uh, leave this uh, screen interval isolated and stable below the upper part of the land, which will have subsided. So there's things we can do. Um, and, uh, you know, hopefully you couple all this with good water management and maybe all these bad things won't happen. I hope that's the case. But as as well designers, we need to plan for it. So th and these things aren't very hard to do. So. With that, I would say let's you know, and there may be many other things that you can do in a particular location in a particular case. Uh, let's just uh, stay safe out there, but also um, think out of the box as needed for uh, both well design and just general water management. Thank you.